Welcome back. Wow, it is another CPI day. Boy, oh boy, we are 15, uh, 14 minutes here from the release of CPI. Let's talk expectations. Let me give you my predictions as well. I want you to see what my predictions are versus what uh, obviously the street's expectations are. But this is a big deal. Uh, a lot is hinging on what we have right now coming out in the next 14 minutes. Reason for that is doesn't matter if jobs reports are coming in strong if inflation is falling. It doesn't matter if the Federal Reserve talks hawkishly if inflation is coming down because then we'll know that's temporary. We need inflation to come down. Everything starts with inflation. So let's see if we can get it down. These are the CPI expectations along with Kevin's opinion. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, we have CPI month over month here of uh, flat. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get a slight little hair to the negative there, negative 0.1. A negative handle is very good for consumer psychology as well, if we can actually get that to come through. Uh, year over year, it'd be nice to get a 2.9. Uh, we'll see. Who knows? Uh, and, and then, of course, on the uh, X of food and energy there, looking for that uh, 0 0.24. So we'll, we'll see if we can... We can hit some of these. I'm leaning a little bit uh, for a softer number. Uh, I am hopeful of that. I think the last thing we want here is anything that implies, uh, and I really hate the word, but sticky. Uh, any kind of sticky is not great because it reiterates the concern the Federal Reserve has. The big concern the Federal Reserve has right now is that, hey, the easy part about inflation is behind us. And that now... We face the hard part, the hard part of inflation being the leftover services inflation that needs to come down. And uh, even though we've been trending down, it is important to stay higher for longer to get the rest of the job done. This is the rest of the job they're talking about, that the easy part was getting rid of this fat right here. The hard part is getting that six pack and getting back down from uh, from the levels we are here. Back to the levels here. So here we are. We're now 12 minutes away from the uh, release of CPI. Uh, this is the uh, New York Fed's multivariate core here. Big deal. Uh, something that we, uh, we like to use as a tool to see how is the Federal Reserve's uh, PCE actually trending. That's the personnel consumption expenditures. Uh, now, uh, we do have uh, oil. Falling again, WTI Western uh, down about 72 basis points. You look at uh, bonds themselves, they're actually falling in the pre-market, uh, well, uh, yields, which is very interesting. Uh, the 10 years down 5.8 basis points. Makes you wonder if uh, somebody has a heads up. Bitcoin is also knocking on the door of about uh, 42,000 again, sitting at uh, 41.8 with the... Pre-market for stocks, mostly green across the board, up about 20 basis points on the Dow, 27 NASDAQ, and 12 on the S&P 500. So uh, as we wait, we'll go ahead and take a look to see what some of the suits are saying. Obviously, when we actually get these data releases, we'll be going through everything in the reports that we have. So uh, bonds and rate positioning are prone to an upside miss, say the suits. Uh, stretch, stretch positioning, they say, in treasuries and uh, SOFR futures leave rates and yields poised to move higher if today's consumer price data surprises to the upside. Well, I feel like that's duh. Uh, but anyway, you'd be forgiven to think CPI came out Monday, which was lower than expected, or, or and, and much lower than expected, given that 10-year yields moved down to 4.19% this morning. The supply concession ahead of the three and 10 year auctions has taken back. Okay, so they're basically saying, hey, like if you're waking up looking at the treasury yields, you might be thinking, oh, <clears throat> inflation must have come in good because we're down six basis points on the 10 year. It's a good point. <laughs> I mean, it's, I was looking at that as well. I'm like, huh, that's not interesting. Interesting lead in. Who, who leaked it? You know, uh, J Powell probably already knows all of the data. 
uh, he's able to request it a day or two early. Lucky dog. Then he doesn't have to wake up at 5 in the morning to be awake with his coffee. Although he is uh, East Coast, so I suppose for him it'd be more like 8, but whatever. Uh, the focus of the day is squarely upon this CPI release, obviously. Doesn't really matter what anybody thinks right now until we get that report. Uh, of course, there is a lot of uh, suspicion that uh, the CPI report that we're going to get, no matter what it is, uh, will end up being rigged in some shape or form. And mostly uh, a lot of pain yesterday, uh, or sorry, last last CPI report, nice, right? Uh, over the concern that maybe some of the data is just not very accurate. Uh, for example, one of the biggest uh, concerns that folks had was this 34% year-over-year decline in health insurance reads, uh, which uh, a lot of folks suspected was a uh, a rigging when uh, there was a large change in the uh, actual underlying calculation for this. So we'll see what, uh, what, what people complain about today. Uh, the last CPI report, let's see here, let's do, there we go. The last CPI report, if we look at some of those services, get a little bit of a prep here. We had uh, miscellaneous personal services at point one, that's pretty good. Other personal services, point three, it's, you know, a little elevated there. Personal care services, point four. We want to get those monthly numbers to point one or point two, ideally, because any of those numbers, you'll just multiply by 12. And you'll get about an annual speed that you're going at. So, for example, if you have a 0.3, you've got an annual speed of 3.6, which is obviously a good chunk higher than that. 2% the Fed wants. Education and comms came in zero. Recreation, 0.2. Pet service, including vet services. Look at that. 0.6% in the last read. So it'd be nice to see that go back to either that negative 0.6 we saw or the zero. Uh, it's got about a half percent weight there in CPI. Uh, airfares, negative 0.9. Car and truck rental, negative 1.5. Transportation services were up 0.8. That's a big one. Let's see if we can get transportation services down this time. Transportation services uh, do include uh, the um, motor vehicle insurance as well as airfares. It's sort of a combination of everything. And uh, what we saw last month was that motor vehicle insurance skyrocketed relative to this decline that we got in uh, airline airfares. You had almost a 2% monthly increase in motor vehicle insurance. Now, in fairness, <clears throat> The decline of motor vehicle insurance is expected only after a lag. That is, insurance companies operate in this weird way where you collect these premiums, costs start going up, then they have to start raising insurance prices. But that takes a year to fully realize because everybody's kind of got to renew their policy at a higher rate. So you have, a, a, you have this two-folded lag. <clears throat> One, insurance companies have to realize the higher cost, then they have to pass them along. So then we have car and truck rental, negative 1.5%. Uh, it's nice to see that drop, although previously we were here at zero and 1.3%. Uh, so you get some volatility over there. Health insurance was still up 1.1%. We'll see if that smooths out, along with hospital-related services up 1.1%. So it'd be nice to see hospital services come down a bit. Motor vehicle insurance. Obviously, shelter is a big deal. Shelter actually only came in at a 0.3 last time. If for some reason shelter pops up here, it's, it's going to hurt. The uh, one thing you can do, which I really find interesting, is the Zillow Market Comparison Tool. For rents, look at this. So this is, let's look at like San Diego, for example. Look at that year over year change in rent. 
Nice decline here, huh? Now you get a seasonal decline every year around this time. But it's just a higher decline than what we saw last year. Uh, then what you can do is look at a market like I believe Miami is still going up. But you have to be careful. Miami data is, is getting heavily influenced by gentrification. You would only really know that if you're there. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, it's negative 550. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, that's actually shocking despite the gentrification that's happening. Uh, let's look at, I don't know, 33324. I like that one. What do we got here? Yeah, you got a $100 decline. That's uh, Broward County, Florida. Let's do another one. Let's go uh, Salt Lake. Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City, $239. Look at that gap. That's a big move there. And you have to look too. The median price here is $1,500. So the fact that the rent is down $239. You know, this is important if you're a landlord or a real estate investor to be paying attention to this. We certainly are at house hack, but that's a 16% decline. Like, uh, let's let's go to another market that might be going down a little bit. Let's try like uh, Boise. Let's see what we got over here. Yeah, see so here's about a 10% decline. It's actually not as bad as uh, Utah. Let's do Austin. Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's also about a 10% decline. It's just the entire country is seeing rents stabilize. Ventura, California, that's actually lower than the average decline we were seeing there. It's about 7%. See if we go ridiculous. Madison, Wisconsin. Sure. Madison, Wisconsin. We've got, wow, year over year positive. $95 of an increase. Wow. You fancy, fancy folks over there. SF. Wow. SF's decline, not actually that bad. 220, 339.5. It's about 6.5%. Yeah, that's what I'm noticing as well. Um, Utah hit a little bit more. What about Denver? <clears throat> wow, that's nothing. That's almost no change. It's almost a flat line there in Denver. Very interesting. Nash. Mm -hmm. Pretty flat. How about uh, Phoenix? Ooh, Phoenix flat. Wow. I'm actually surprised by that. New York City. So we'll go with like a Manhattan. Uh, what? Oh, I'll try New York, New York. Duh. Okay. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> Zero flat year over year. Interesting. Boston. Yeah, let's give that a shot. Year over year change barely moved. Ah, this reminds me. Oh, look, if anything, you're starting to trend up again. Boston's a great place. Uh, I think. I mean, I really like it. So, all right, one minute away. Let's do like one more of these. One or two more. Yeah. Washington down about a hundred bucks, like five percent. And last one, let's do Cincinnati. Last one, last one. Fifty nine bucks. It's actually not bad. Well, some of these are actually not that bad. But you are getting that. I mean, <clears throat> it was very far and few between that were actually positive, right? All right. Everyone ready? I don't know. I'm not. I mean, I am, but I am, but I'm not. It's like this could be a, <clears throat> like, let's say you're long like me. This could be a really poopy day or a really good day. Or it could be nothing. It could just match. It could just, it could just match. Maybe it'll just match. All right. Oh, boy. Here we go. Buckle up. And CPI month over month. Let's see. Oh, comes in at 0.1. A little hot and the other two match. Uh, so month over month comes in at 0.1 on the headline. Uh, then you got a match CPI core. You got a ma at 0.3. Match CPI year over year, 3.1. We didn't get anything slightly soft. If anything, we're just teeny little bit to the warmer side. But that's the non-core. That's a little bit to the other side. Uh, so as far as um, uh, the... Uh, uh, November survey here, we are uh, pretty much at expectations. 
most of the analysts were like right bang on 0.03%. It's actually a, probably a good thing when we're starting to get the numbers come in a little bit more accurate, mostly because when the numbers come in more accurate, it means you're in a more stable economy. It's actually pretty good then. Uh, we'll take it. Uh, but uh, let's see. Yeah. Again, pretty much in line with expectations. Can't even get the darn thing to load right now because uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics is so overwhelmed. Let's go listen in here for a moment. They're not going to breach that 3% on these numbers. Uh, now let's look at year over year. Year over year, 3.1, exactly as expected. One tenth lighter than 3.2. The best we had was June of this year at 3.0. That was the best. The market actually likes this, by the way. And if you strip out food and energy, it's up 4%, exactly the same as our last read. And the last read and this read, well, they're the best since May of 2021 when it was 3.9. Uh, but that is a blessing. I'm sorry, 3.8. But it's a blessing in disguise, Becky, because we haven't been below 4%, that means, since May of 2021. And that All right, let me listen it over here. Let's actually go into the report here. Index for shelter continued to rise really in November, offsetting a decline in gas. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Energy fell 2.3% over the month as a 6% decline in gas more than offset the energy increases. Food index up 0.2%. That's fine. After rising 0.3 in October, food at home increased 0.1%. Away from home, 0.4%. Index for all other items. Uh, after rising 0.2%, uh, rose 0.3% in November after rising 0.2% in October. Uh, what increased? Rent, owner's equivalent rent, medical care, motor vehicle insurance. They're the ones I was talking about. Uh, still increases over here. Let's see how much. Uh, the uh, indices for apparel, household furnishings, operations, communications, and recreation were among those that decreased. Uh, uh, the all items index... 3.1% for the 12 month ending. Uh, it was a little smaller than what we were, what we had before. Let me look at this quickly here. Wow. Come on, man. Used cars and trucks up 1.6%. Uh, that's insane. How, how, uh, you've got, uh, apparel coming down 1.3%. The apparel companies are actually starting to do good. Dang it. Uh, here's that, uh, shelter section. Look at that 0.4%. Uh, this one's not good right here. I don't like this one. Uh, look at that. Services, less energy comes in a little warm there. 0 0.5, 0 0.5 versus that 0.3 prior, partly led by transportation services coming in warm again. Uh, and uh, then we have medical care services up 0 0.6, also a little warm. Not great. Okay. How, how? medical care index rose 0.6% in November after rising 0.3 in October. The index for physician services increased 0.6% month over month. And prescription drugs rose 0.5%. Darn. Uh, used car and truck. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let me get to some of the detailed items here. And uh, let's get into what some of the suits are reacting with as well. Uh, so uh, the more I look at it, the more it feels like you've still got those sticky services. <clears throat> so not, not a glorious uh, report, that's for sure. I'd say this is fortunately not like a crazy beat on uh, on, on core. I'd rather the month over month 0 0.1 increase be at uh, where it is than at, uh, uh, you know, on the headline than at core. Okay, so financial services down 0.1%. Apparel services other than laundry cleaning, 0.7. Laundry, look at that. Why? Miscellaneous personal care services. These things are all part of sort of that sticky core part. Uh, it's not so fantastic. Other personal services, 0.3. There's still work to do here. You've got uh, postage services, negative 0.6. Fine. Telephone services, flat. Education, 0.1. That's good. That's fine. Rec services, 0.3. A little warm. Pet services, negative. I'll take it. Rec services, 0.1. Public transportation coming in with a 1% move there. Uh, motor vehicle insurance coming in with a 1% move. It's still, it's a lagging one. We know that, but not only is it lagging, it, it is lower than it has been in the prior months. So it's not bad. Uh, but I, I think we're going to get a little bit of a warmer core, super core here as that gets calculated out. Although car and truck rentals down 0.2%. That's a nice move down. Transportation services still coming in hot at 1.1 up. Airfares, airfares down again, negative 0.4. We'll take it. 
All right. We've got hospital services, point one. Okay. That's actually good. I like that. Medical care services. That's hot. Nah, that's not great. So doctors, come on. What are y'all doing? Uh, they've got so many costs to deal with, though. I feel bad for what they got to deal with with insurance companies. But all of this, dentists, physician services, professional medical services, uh, or just professional services in general, all of these coming in warm. Gardening and lawn care services, prices going up uh, 0.9%. Water and trash collection up 0.3%. Here's rent. Rent of shelter pops up again a little bit. It's not great. That's what we were talking about. But, you know, this is the number you don't want to start going up again at 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So let's see here. I mean, I would guess the bond yields should be going up after this one. Uh, kind of stable at about 4.4, uh, 4.2 right now. We'll see. I don't know. I, I, I'm not too, too excited about that. I think that'll turn around though. It might actually end up being positive. It's, the good news is it's not runaway, right? It's it's not like we're looking at some kind of runaway inflation here uh, that uh, that's pretty bad. I don't think having core stuck near 4% is anything to celebrate. Yeah, I agree. That's what one of the suits here is saying. Two-year yields uh, spiked a little bit higher, but, but it's been pretty volatile right now. The market doesn't really know how to digest this at this moment, uh, and, and I agree with that. I, I, if I'm J-Pow, I'm looking at it, I go up. Oh, just we're waiting a few more months. I mean, that's what everybody, the market was already pricing in anyway. It's not like we were expecting them to cut here. And what we really just didn't want was a big oopsie. We didn't get an oopsie. We didn't get it not. We did not get an oopsie doopsies, uh, which is good. Pet products. Okay, so now we're getting into goods, sporting goods. I mean, all of these are negative. Negative 0.3% on pet products. Negative 0.6% on sporting goods. Oh, photography equipment up 1.3%. Yeah, wow, photography equipment's been killing it. 2.8, 6.8. Jeez, Lord. Uh, you've got recreation commodities. What the heck is that? Negative uh, 0.6. Medical care commodities up 0.5. There's the medical, the medical field. Uh, I'll talk here about no big surprises, mostly as expected here. Used car trucks. I don't understand how this is getting more expensive. How? How are used cars and trucks get going up? Uh, that's whatever, man. All right. Uh, footwear down 0.5%. You've got toddler apparel, negative 1.4%. Women's apparel, negative 0.9%. Oh, look at that. Boys apparel, negative 3.4%. So apparel is just getting smoked. Negative 1.3% across the board for the entire category. Housekeeping supplies. Housekeeping? Negative 0.5. Appliances, negative 0.1. Those durables have been getting smoked for the last year. All items, uh, less food and energy, 0.3%. Furniture and bedding, negative 1.1%. Uh, and then obviously we get into our energies over here. We get into our food away from home, 0.4%. Where's alcohol away from home? What we need to know uh, for research, of course. Uh, peanut butter, negative 2.1%. Okay. Uh, sugar sweets, negative a little bit. Coffee, slightly positive. All right, so mixed bag over here, although it does look like potatoes are getting expensive, up 4.6%. All right, let's get a little bit more on what some of the suits here are saying and market reaction. So the rise in used car prices was the first time since May. Uh, let's see here. Used car prices, a big bone of contention among forecasters going into the data, rose 1.6% after falling 0.8% the previous month. After the end of the auto worker strike, new car prices edged down by 0.1% after a, a fall in October. Uh, this is really being heralded as uh, no big surprise. I, I find that interesting. I, I really, okay, now we got to get super core. So we're working to get super core right now. The uh, the data is, uh, okay, Ross Gerber tweeted, inflation is dead. Let's go, Ross. I love the optimism. I'll press like. Uh, core CPI, okay, Nick T tweeted, core CPI rose 0.3% in November. I really wanted to miss here. Uh, I, was, I was trying to will it for everybody. I, I couldn't do it. I failed. My estimates failed. 
uh, uh, we'll have to do winning somewhere else. It's not, you know what? I'm not going to be a professional CPI forecaster. Uh, so the core CPI rose 0.3% in November from October in line with expectations. This held a 12 month, this held 12 month core inflation at 4% and brought, uh, the six month annualized rate down to 2.9. Wow. The six month, the two, the three month is, is a little, a little more aggressive, but I want you to see this six month annualized. It's actually really good. Oops. Let's see here. Uh, uh, and then again, we're waiting for Supercore. As we wait for Supercore to be calculated and graphed out. Look at this, the Nick T chart here. I mean, that is, that's a very nice decline here in inflation. You can see how volatile the three month is. Look at that three month. That's the light line, the lightest blue. The most smooth are the 12 month and the six month which makes sense. And as you can see, those are plummeting. In fact, the six month coming in at 2.9%. Very, very low. <clears throat> so that's good. Trending in the right direction. Get the 10 year treasury. Still trying to sneak up here. Uh, 4.21. Uh, again, I'll take what we got here over, over hot core any day. Super core popped up <coughs> to... 3.93% from a year ago. It's only the second time this year that super core inflation has sped up. Dang it. Uh, that's that's the one we don't want. Uh, super core is, is like take out housing. Uh, and it's, it's really just trying to look at the wage sensitive categories. Wage sensitive categories like medical care services, personal care services, right? Uh, those Those aren't great. Uh, and, and despite this, we have uh, Bill here who says, you believe these numbers? Laughing emoji, laughing emoji, tongue emoji, laughing emo smiley emoji. It's all fake news. <laughs> Somebody here says, do you think the Volcker era will come back in 2025? Why? I'm legitimately curious why you think we're, we would trend towards Paul Volcker when inflation is doing what it is on screen. That doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, unless you're seeing something, I'm not seeing it. I don't, I don't, even with super core inflation at 3.9% on a year over year level, who cares? Uh, like it's not worth destroying the economy. No, there's no, there's no Paul Volcker here. Uh, yeah. Okay. After cooling for nine months, core services CPI remained, wait, uh, remained little changed in November. That's not good. And goods inflation was around zero. Let me show you that. I mean, I like that. Uh, the Fed's mandate is not to have stable uh, all prices. It's to have an average of stable prices. <laughs> but uh, it would be nice to get some more progress over here on services, excluding energy services. As you can see, we're kind of stuck right now at this 3% level. We've had this before, though. You can see that right here, where we kind of flatten out a little bit. This is these are goods right here. Goods at zero percent. So you're doing pretty well on on goods. You've definitely got goods coming down, but uh, it's at it's at darn services sector. Just suck right now. We really want to push, 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 push that down. Uh, so we'll see. Let's take a look at how uh, some stocks are reacting, and then we'll get some more updates from the suits. So we're at uh, about a qu we're quarter percent up, kind of flat here on QQQ. The euphoria is, is not here, though. It's not euphoria time yet. Uh, Tesla doesn't like this. Tesla dropping about 40 bips here, following a 1.6% decline yesterday. Despite being removed from the NASDAQ, uh, 100, end phase is up in the pre-market here by about 24 bips, 52 on the day. Uh, it did fall back into its darn trend though. I, I did not, wait, did it? Oh, no, 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 Yeah, okay, good. We're, we're still just above the trend here. Just above the trend. Bitcoin's reaction on the five minute. Let's go to the one minute. Yeah, I mean, most, most of the reactions here seem relatively stable. 
It doesn't seem like there's anything <clears throat> major. I mean, the biggest decliner today is Macy's at two and a half percent, and the biggest gainer right now is Beyond at at two percent. So, in other words, like nothing exciting happening here. So, looking again at yeah, look at how wow, look how volatile uh, you have super core inflation. I'll show you. Hold on. It's very volatile. Let's just put it that way. And uh, it's kind of annoying to look at on a monthly basis because look at this. Look how insane that looks. I mean, it's just, it's like a, a, a heart counter or whatever. What are those things called? I don't know. Anyway, uh, we could we could ask the doctors, but I'd be afraid because they'll, they'll just charge it. They'll overcharge us. Just like the CPI report is saying. Uh, raise their prices on us. Although, again, I, I honestly, I empathize with people in the medical world. I, I couldn't deal with the costs they have to deal with and, uh, and, and dealing with insurance companies. It just sounds like a pain in the butt. Uh, stock futures slightly slipping with the 10-year ticking higher. Yeah, that's, yeah, I mean, relatively stable across the board. Again, we'll take it. Let's look if we can get a little bit more here on... Uh, okay, yeah, super core chart is out. Super core month over month and year over year numbers. All right. Standing by for the chart. Here it is. This is a good one. Ready for it? Here it is. Boom, baby. Look at that. Up. And a lot of them are really focused on uh, how we're winning with House Hack right now and how you can as well. Yeah, but also obviously entrepreneurship, business startup, like running a startup, there's a lot. Uh, and so so a lot of the lessons will be in there. It's kind of cool. So take a look at this super core CPI. Uh, again, look how kind of stuck we've been here for the last six months. Very, very stuck. Transportation services, really a fat portion right here. Fat, fat, fat portion. Uh, so somebody says we've got some stream lag all of a sudden. Uh, I don't know. Uh, really? I'm not, I'm not seeing any issue. No, I don't have any issues on it. Somebody says refresh. It's fine. Anyway, so um, transportation services here. <clears throat> it's it's the suits. You know, the deal on the gold course is so good. They didn't want me to tell you about uh, that the price is going to go up Thursday. And so you've got two days here to either email us at staff at meetkevin.com to bundle up uh, or... Uh, to uh, to check out on that gold course. That's what it is. It's it's. Can we blame the Russians? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Russian people are bad people. I think Putin's a nut job. Okay, but let's focus on this. So uh, super core inflation. Uh, let's see here. Why does it say zero right here? It's it's yeah. That's weird. I don't know what they did with this chart over here. I think they meant to put that right here at about, what would that be, 4-ish percent? It's it's like 3.96 is what Supercore is. So I think they screwed up the chart a little bit. But uh, that black arrow right here should be right here at about 3.96. And uh, again, the big portion here is... Uh, Transportation services. If you actually look at Supercore, though, medical care services, how is this down? See, look at that. That's actually where you've seen a little bit of a decline over the past few months. And I've been pooping on them because of what I saw in uh, <clears throat> this CPI report. So that's interesting. Okay, so looking at some more of the suits. Is the strength in services sustainable? And one suit here says... Likely not, but the Fed can't take any chances. It's true. The core was fairly in line with expectations. The details are not as supportive. Most of the strength is stemming from the services sector. That's why you see super core measuring 0.44% month over month versus 0.22 in uh, October. That would be this number down. Come on. Okay, there we go. That would be this number right here. But again, look at that volatility. Very, very, very volatile here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Goods. Disinflation continues. Commodity prices. X-Food and Energy fell 0.3%. Uh, 
CPI data provides an interesting test of the market's attitude. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. That's a good point. Like, how how is the market really reacting to this? Not much. I mean, the Treasury yields are still slightly negative, 4.22. Not as low as they were beforehand, but, I mean, this, this isn't terrible. Uh, and then we go look at, uh, let's go see the Qs here. 21 bips. Tesla's down about 28, 31, and phase up about 0.14. So we'll watch this. Let's uh, listen to CNBC for a moment and get some reaction here. How many people confront me and say, you're from Dallas. How do I get my daughter or son into SMU or TCU or someplace else? What? What does this have to do with inflation, CNBC? That's not a good thing. So and like we're that. seeing it at Stanford as well, by the way. Right. And we've had a lot of... What, what do I care? You do. <laughs> what would I do? Would have you kept her in this position? There's a view, I think, uh, among some. All right, whatever. This is all just college nonsense. Alexandro says, quit pitching the courses. Okay, make sure to go to meetkevin.com to check out the courses. Courses are worth it as long as you apply them. It's a good line. I like that. I like that. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at crypto's uh, reaction here. Looks like we're sitting at 41.9 on BTC, 22 on Ethereum. Not bad. Binance coin, I can't believe it. It's still sitting here at 252. Cardano sitting up 50% on the week. I mean, you're at 60 cents on ADA. Let's go. Polygon's up 12% on the week. Polkadot's up 31% on the week. Cosmos, 23%. Wow. Wow, 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 wee, wow. All right. Let's go see what uh, what else is being said here. Let's get some more reactions. Uh, let's see here. Ross is getting mad about the shelter number in CPI. Although, even if we remove shelter, we still had a little bit of a warm report. Does look like you're getting... The Q's falling, uh, potentially about to go negative here on the Q's. You can see that here. We're only up about eight basis points right now. We're about to lose the lead there. Fed swaps actually pricing in slightly higher chance of rate cuts. Interesting. Ooh, yeah, uh, Oracle. That's right. We had those Oracle numbers yesterday. Yeah, 9%. 9%, and they didn't even miss that much. Just a slight cooling on uh, their cloud revenues and expectations. Let's see here. Wouldn't it be great if they raised rates just one point tomorrow? No. <laughs> uh, that is true. If you think about it, the Federal Reserve does speak tomorrow. So we've got two days in a row here of a lot of drama. A lot of drama. <clears throat> Let's see here. What else? Uh, okay. Let's see. Can we talk it? Inflation here? Or are we still doing Harvard? Lower than six. We felt it would have great inflationary pressure. So this business of they go to three nine and then they'll suddenly be worried. I don't see it. It's got to be in the high fours. And as far as inflation is concerned, it's got to. You have to be confident it's not going to rear its ugly head once again. Consumer spending, as you pointed out, is good. Why? You have jobs. Their real wages are going up, and the emphasis uh, on up. goods, foods, etc. Real wages are starting to go up again. That's what he meant to say. Because that's what the fact is. And deflation. Those are goods. We're a service-driven economy. And we're still seeing consumption on the services side. Um, so I, I basically am a school that they're going to hold for quite some time, longer than the market is discounting. And yeah, here's the good thing. We've gotten back to almost normal financing costs. And we distorted it. While I was there, we took rates to zero. We destroyed price discovery, as an economist would say. And now we're back getting to normality. The problem, Becky is the amount of debt that has Normality to be refinanced. Normality more than a decade ago. So you yeah, but previous decades were at the low, yeah. low end of the range of 4%. Right. The 10 years at the very low end. 
So what do you say to, you know, it's always, uh, it's always, 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 always the folks who lived through the seventies who are, well, you know, we're just going back to normal. They might not be wrong. I mean, after all, he's right. You know, 4% when we look 10 years ago was very, very normal in terms of rates. The problem is the trend of opportunistic disinflation from the 80s straight down. 40 years, 40 years of a trend down. So if we had rates at zero and inflation was at 1.7%, in other words, we were starting to talk about negative interest rates to stimulate the economy. Can we really say that rates were artificially low or were rates responding to the lack of inflation that we had? Because those are two very different things. Most would say, Rates were simply a symptom of what inflation was. But there are always these folks who come out and go, wow, we're just going back to normal. I don't know if it's just like easy to sell that idea to, you know, maybe people who also lived through the 70s that need to be sold gold. You know, I think I think that's that's very common is this idea of uh, how can you, you know, convince people that the era of low rates is gone forever and we're going back to, you know, buy gold and be fearful. You know, Paul Volcker's coming back. I think all that's BS. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not here calling for rate cuts tomorrow, that's for sure. But uh, 10 years from now, we're going to be lower, in my opinion, than where we were pre-COVID because we'll get through this nonsense of a spike we had from the stupid money printing. And so, I mean, you have two things. Like, let's put it this way. As long as our country doesn't blow up to debt, which is already happening anyway, but as long as that doesn't cause a collapse, which eventually will, but I think that's hundreds of years out. The, the country is still too too new. It's, it's too much of a little baby. Uh, <clears throat> as long as we don't have a debt blow up, interest rates should slowly trend lower than where they were pre-COVID. Highly, highly believe that. Uh, I believe that in 10 years, and mark my words, put it on the calendar. Hopefully you're still watching me in 10 years. I'm not going to go anywhere. You know, I know uh, people's enthusiasm for me will go up and down with the cycles, but it's okay. I'll still be here. But mark your calendar, 10 years. Is me Kevin right? Or was he right? Did the did the 30-year mortgage go to 1.8%? You can ask Siri right now. It'll take you 10 seconds to do it. Remind me in 10 years. Uh, was Kevin right? Mortgage rates 1.8% on the 30-year. Highly believe it. Europe's our example. The, the path is already paved for that. It's uh, and, and so what does that mean for you? You need assets. Assets. That's real estate and socks. Well, this is my take. So anyway. Uh, so, uh, it, it, you know, it, that could be wrong. <laughs> right? Don't get me wrong. Uh, but anyway, uh, holding on to some of the gains here on the queues. Somebody here says, Gaylord, says uh, uh, the dollar won't exist in 10 years. Uh, the only way that happens is if we can't sustain our debt, which, don't get me wrong, the debt is on an unsustainable path, but we can sustain the debt that we have today. 10 years from now, you'll be augmented reality living in, people, in, in people's living rooms. Well, then they're going to see my tiny short shorts. Uh... Let's see here. You can always buy gold. That's never a bad deal. I mean, I kind of disagree. Uh, I, I generally think that you, 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 there, there's a, I don't, I don't actually think gold is acting as, as much of an inflation protector as, as we'd like to think. Uh, otherwise gold, I feel like would be substantially higher today. Farmer Brett here says I'll be watching in 10 years. I still got I still got to come visit you man. We we got to confront Farmer Brett. He's here every day. Uh what a trooper. Thanks man. Tesla only being down 0.5. I got to be a gift with sticky numbers, no. Sure. Uh yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know. Did it really move much after the CPI? Yeah, it did. No, you're right. Yeah, it could be down a lot more. You're right. Yeah, it, it did actually move on CPI. Yeah. No, you're right. 
What of the low inflation since the 80s was driven by globalization, but now we may be heading towards deglobalization? So let me be really clear. A lot of people during the COVID pandemic said we're going to go towards deglobalization, mostly because people were pissed that supply chains were broken and countries had all these various different restrictions. There's no way in hell. I want to be crystal clear about this. There's no way in hell we don't re-globalize. Re-globalize. All that means is like, if Apple's like, oh, well, that sucked, the pandemic. Uh, we had so much demand, but China couldn't fulfill. How about we start building some phones in India or Indonesia or the Philippines? That's re-globalization. And that is a way of actually getting prices down again. You go right towards that trend. So there are plenty of countries other than China. And no, we're not going to go manufacture everything in the United States. Uh, by the way, I've been babying the crap out of this phone. And damn thing slipped out of my uh, shorts while I was on a go-kart and just did one of these over the concrete. <laughs> Like, uh, it's not bad enough to where, like, I'm actually going to use Apple Care and fix it. But it was a slap in the face. <clears throat> Let's see here. So, why isn't demand destruction corollary never mentioned? I don't know, Tim. Give us a little bit more, a little bit more detail on your perspective here. Uh, let's see here. I'd say it's complicated global expansion and specialization did a good job of acting as deflationary forces back in the day. I dare say this time is different with those variables. I mean, why? What what would make a difference? What what all of a sudden makes the uh, the capitalistic world not desiring to lower prices? That's what deflation is, folks. You you would have spent, you know, I always like to use the example of you want to buy a 42 inch Sony TV, Sony Bravia TV. Uh, 15 years ago, I know because I did this. I was one of those losers. I sold my World of Warcraft account for $2,000 and promptly invested it into a Sony Bravia TV, which is uh, now worthless, A, and B, would probably cost about $190 if you were to buy it brand new. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, look, I'm not saying, uh, you know, that de uh, that re-globalization is going to happen overnight. You have uh, infrastructure challenges in, in countries like India as well, mostly because India is so uh, so divided in terms of their government, uh, the way their government. It's not like the CCP where you have sort of one main government you can run this by. It's it's you've got a patchwork quilt of rules and regulations in India. So, look, there are challenges of re-globalization. I'm not going to say it's like that but uh i'm convinced it's gonna be very difficult to convince me otherwise that there won't be re-globalization yeah somebody here says powell tomorrow this changes everything <laughs> i don't think so uh yeah sureish here thinks i actually thought a tv was an investment so you're either smoking dope or you're a hater. Gee, the way, thanks for being here. <laughs> uh, if landlords are giving incentives or concessions off the first month rent versus lowering prices, wouldn't it make it appear as rents are actually doing better than they really are? Yes. Yes. Deflation in housing is missing. Oh, it, it, I don't know that we're going to get deflation in housing. I think you're going to get more of a, you know, flatness, uh, disinflation in housing. But... Uh, why are PPI expectations so high for tomorrow? Let's go look at that. So for tomorrow, tomorrow's PPI report, which comes out right before the Fed, I don't actually think they're that high. They're actually very low. Survey month over month for uh, goods, uh, or, or headline rather, 0%. Month over month, X food and energy, 0.2%. X food energy trade 0.2 final demand year over year one X food energy year over year 2.2 X food energy trade year over year 2.8. These numbers are fine. 
Like those PPI numbers are fine, and they're a leading indicator of uh, uh, CPI. Kevin, deflation is bad because then people won't buy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, deflation is actually horrible. Deflation is very, very bad for the economy. Very bad. Uh, it is you, Deflation is generally associated with depressions. Look at, you know, 1922. Look at 1929. It's a terrible thing. Oh, sure. sure I, dis- I, I misunderstood what you said then. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh... Let's see here. Uh, nice green screen system. Yeah, I wish I had a green screen. I don't. Yeah, we're doing the every morning. The reason we have this channel is every morning we're doing the stock market open live stream on this channel. Just so it doesn't dilute the main channel as much. They were, they were really competing with each other. Uh, whereas now they don't. So it's a little bit, I know it's a shake up. So uh, there's some work there. All right. Uh, So let's see. Let's take a look at what else the suits are saying here. Did CPI affect market projections for rate cuts? Oh, good question. So let's, uh, let's look at that. So we'll do a few things now that the data should be out because it takes about 15 minutes to actually start getting the reactions. So we have a 94.3% chance of a hold tomorrow, 5.7% chance of a hike. This is pretty much not going to happen. As far as a rate cut, oh, that's really interesting. So yesterday we had a basic. March 20th. Oh, I get it now, Shurish. I misunderstood what you said completely. Thank you for that. Anyway, uh, March 20th, we're looking at a hold of a coin toss, 50.4%. And uh, a a tiny little pricing in that there could be a hike, but only 2.9%. More likely that at about 46.7% that we'd get our first cut in in march so uh not not nothing changing there all right let's see the uh what the rest of the suits are saying here okay market reaction is largely zzz what everybody going to sleep Admission to sporting events was flat after big rises in 3.6 and 7.7%. Highly erratic number. That skews CPI readings. Today's report is a little bit of a mood dampener after all the market chatter around cuts. Simply put, this isn't enough inflation deceleration to reassert or justify the market's easing expectations. Yeah, I, I agree with that. This is a pretty benign report. And uh, we're about 20 minutes away from the market open. So see what's going on. Somebody here says you got a refresh video. Looks like maybe there was a little glitch or something. Decline in apparel prices doesn't bode well for retailers this holiday season. Biggest drop since the pandemic. Wow. And and uh, consumer retailers have uh, really started to do well, actually. Still, that CPI uh, housing data, though, still not actually rolling over. Let me show you these two charts. Do I still like Intel at these levels? Yeah, I haven't changed my outlook for Intel. Okay, obviously, it's, it's done nicely so far. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, core services kind of sticking flat, not so fantastic. Let's see, do we have anything else from our Boa Nikti? 
Let's see here. No. No, no, no. Markets front running the first rate cut. Let's find out. Bonds. Yield still down 2.3% on the 10 year. So still dropping on that 10 year. <clears throat> Nick T. Nope. Uh. No, he just tweeted the same thing twice. Is that? What is this? Consumer price index. Core consumer price index. Oh, okay. He has two charts. I like the Wall Street Journal charts. So here's one of the charts. Core consumer prices. As you can see, that six month is nicely plummeting. 12 month trending down nicely. Three month a little bit more volatile. Uh, but he also has another tweet here. This one. And this is CPI. Three month annualized down. 12 and six months, somewhat stable over here. Uh, thanks, Jay. Appreciate saying, you saying that. You rock great value. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. <clears throat> Tesla lost the lead. Oh, no. Yeah, down about 39 bips. I'm surprised, honestly, the Qs are, are as flat as they are. I mean, 12 bips here. I want to see what happens in about 18 minutes when the market actually opens. It'll be fascinating. Okay, uh, Kevin, your argument uh, for inflation, uh, or sorry, that deflation equals bad, neglects time preference. Your exact case of the Bravia TV, you bought and didn't wait. Shake my head. Uh, well, this, this is a little different. So I didn't have a TV in my room. Uh, so the, the question, I mean, we can't, when we're trying to understand deflation, we can't look at individual case studies to try to understand inf uh, deflation psychology. Deflation psychology uh, is actually one that happens more on the margin. I mean, it's like, it's not like you're uh, because of deflation, you're going to stop buying groceries. You're going to stop buying gas, right? Like the economy and mass is going to still move. The difference is going to be, Hey, do we, you know, do, do we want to upgrade our washing machine for Black Friday this year? Eh, let's wait till next year, right? It's those purchases at the margin that actually make a substantial difference uh, and, and and can really drive GDP negative. So uh, it's, hey, uh, do you need that new iPad? Eh, let's skip this model. Let's wait for next year's. It's that happening slightly more at the margin that's driven by inflation expectations. You know, for example, if, if you believe that inflation is going to be very, very high and you believe that supply chains are, 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 are you know, consistently going to be ruined and your ability to get that washer and dryer and iPad next year is going to be limited, then you might say, well, we may as well buy it now because we don't know if it'll be available when we need it next year or if our old one breaks. In a deflationary environment, you're like, I'm not worried about needing a new one. It'll be available when my current one breaks. It's a it's it's a highly different mentality uh, to be in an, in an inflationary or uh, inflationary economy versus a deflationary economy, uh, and it, it happens subtly and heavily at the margins. So uh, it, it it is it is a a, a really big concern. You you do not want to be cheering for deflation. It uh, it is it is depressionary. <clears throat> Somebody here says, uh, last 40 years, money flowed to businesses. Supply of goods drove prices down. Now capital is flowing to labor. Inequality slash populism leading to fiscal spending, reaching the economy with higher velocity. All right, so let's break this down. Yes, fiscal spending has a higher velocity of money than, than individual spending. This is true. Uh, a potential populism would be sort of like the desire for more stimulus or, or tax credits. Sure. Uh, now capital is flowing to labor. So this idea about growing the services economy can also be heavily influenced by immigration uh, and, uh, and and reglobalization, you know, strengthening supply chains throughout the world. So it's not necessarily a way of saying, oh, yes, you are definitely going to see inflation skyrocket, you know, because of this 
this paradigm shift that you're sort of implying. All right. Interesting statement, though. So oh, let's see here. The monthly, the pickup in monthly core inflation is a reminder of the lingering price pressures the Fed is likely to face. I don't know that you're going to get a super hawkish j Powell tomorrow. I think you'll get a pretty neutral j Powell tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah, I'd love to do some interviews again. Stay tuned. Got a lot, a lot of things going on right now. We're pretty focused on, on house hack and some of the things we're we're preparing for next year. Let's see here. Then we've got. Used car prices posted their first increase since June. Wow. First increase since June on used car prices. I do wonder. At, I mean, the auctions are so volatile, but Wall Street Journal is running the headline Inflation Cooled Slightly. Harvard Board votes to keep Claudine gay. Clothing prices, Bloomberg's running. Clothing prices drop ahead of holiday shopping season. Financial Times, U.S. inflation edges down. Ooh, edging. Washington Post doesn't even talk about inflation on the front. <laughs> Let's try, like, I'm just curious. Is Fox News talking about it? No, not really. Just too busy talking about Nikki Haley and Hunter Biden. Interesting. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So the Fox News headline is, so the Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, and the Financial Times are all talking about how inflation, it, it, like parts of inflation are dropping. Fox News is running the headline, inflation rises slightly in November ahead of key Fed decision. It's, I guess that's where you get your news, eh? Let's see. CNN's probably going to be, it's a drop to support Biden. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yep. U.S. consumer price inflation cooled further last month. <laughs> oh, man. And and they can both be right, but it just shows you the the tilt of, of news. And uh, I, I really wish there was a just a simplified, uh, unbiased way to read your news. Yeah, maybe we'll make it one day. Kevin, do you think Costco will raise its membership fees after the new CEO starts next week? No, I don't think so. I think uh, what you have is Costco that is trying everything in their power to drive consumption at their stores, including price cuts. So if anything, I think they're actually more likely to lower membership prices. Uh, than, than to raise membership prices. 11 minutes, the market open. Let's listen in over here for a moment. Two best-selling hybrid trucks in America are the Ford Maverick, which was I, which is what I have. I get like 900,000 miles to the gallon, David. And I'll give you a ride once in the Maverick, but you have to be in the bed. It's called the bed. That's the thing behind your cap. Um, and then the F-150, uh, their F-150. So they own the number one and number two. The Maverick, you can actually park in the city. Uh, but I do think that that's very telling. And Jim doesn't want his stock at 10 anymore. He doesn't want it at 11. He wants it at 14, 15, pronto. Yeah. In other words, you have to pump EPS, which you can't do with these electric vehicles that they're now cutting production in. That's why Tesla keeps winning. Forecast is 47% this year, 11% next year, and 14% the year after that. Yeah, I, I find, I actually find that, uh, too optimistic. I'll, I'll go to uh, uh, Jonas's note, which actually was very good. And Jonas is Jonas is pretty abject that he he likes you know what's happening with these, but well, he's, he's been calling for them to get real right for a yes, long time. Yes, to get real is the right thing. That's exactly right. And he has ten auto surprises. EV. He he thinks that Tesla's going to lose money on EVs. 
Uh, yeah, he said they could lose money. How about this, David? Asset impairment on EVs and AV. David, autonomous is proving to be a bit of a difficult thing to do. Full self-driving. Elon Musk has been promising it for many, many years. It's still coming. Right. I'll let you know that. How about how hard the Cybertruck is proving? I mean, I feel like we already have it 95% here. If you have FSD, you know. And if you don't, you don't. It, yes. it, and look, I don't want to provoke any more. Look, the big issue with all these is also, will China come in? And I have Secretary Gina Raimondo on today. Oh, nice. And I want to find out, are we going to lower the tariffs on China in order to be able to save the working person money? Because theirs are really come no well way, underneath. Man. We are not letting China sell EVs in this country. Are we really? Come on. You want a $15,000 EV? Come on. I mean, by the way, Europe now, by far, it's a huge market for China. So let's put a 10,000. And obviously the domestic market in China, where more EVs are sold than How about they took over Mexico? Excuse me? The Chinese have the largest share in Mexico of automobiles. Look, I, I, I just, I think it's worth a question. You want me not to ask the question? I think it's a good question. You do? Yeah. They mean, because if she says yes, that's news. Oracle, you idiot. Okay, right? I mean, idiot. Is yeah, that keep, what you did? Idiot. Keep a list. Keep in mind, tomorrow at 5:30 a.m., we will be getting the producer price inflation report, and then at 11 a.m. in both of these California time, which I'll be covering both of, we will get the uh, Federal Reserve uh, press conference and rate decision. Obviously, we're expecting a hold on rates. And uh, we're about seven minutes away from the market open here. Got uh, the NASDAQ sitting at barely up, about to lose the lead here, only up about 0.02%. I'm very curious to see how the market opens this morning. You've got 10 years sitting down 1.5 basis points, two year down flat, basically, I mean, a third of one basis point. All right, close. Huh. Uh, five key takeaways from the CPI report. One, markets whipsawed. Two, it's not clear that this report shifts the narrative for the Fed, just that inflation will keep being bumpy on its way down. Super core inflation warmed up on a monthly and annual basis. Uh, this is closely watched by the Fed and shows that some inflationary pressures have remained. Four, there weren't any big surprises. And five, mostly in line with forecasts. Okay. Core inflation reacceleration should give traders pause. The pickup in monthly core inflation is a reminder of the lingering price pressures that kept the Fed more hawkish. And then obviously that volatile month over month. CPI report. All right. Okay, so we are now uh, six minutes away from the market open. So let's see here. We've got... Google's defeat threatens $200 billion app store industry. This has to do with their Epic Games loss. Stubborn inflation leaves dovish bets at risk. Oh, no. the market. I mean, the market didn't really price very poorly after that. It's pretty stable. Let's go see how things are moving. Slightly negative there on Tesla and phase. Oracle obviously down 9.9 after their slightly weaker report. Nothing really running in the pre-market. And then we're watching those cues to see if we're going to end up getting a, a positive open here or a red open. We're up about six basis points right now. It's not a lot. Let's listen in here. Anytime, anywhere by listening to and following. Oh. So then we have consumer prices pick up for bumpy path down. Okay. Huh. SBF's lawyer says his client, SBF, was the worst witness he's ever had. Yep. 
That makes sense. The guy's a fraud. Mm. Okay, now Cass sees US CPI at uh, 2.9%. Uh, that was my guess. Yeah, but we actually ended up getting that 3.1 uh, as expected. Okay, here we are now just three minutes away from the market open. Everything mostly, things are mostly stable. The wheels haven't fallen off just yet. Let's see what happens as this market opens. Someday markets will realize it's inflationary and U.S. debt and interest payments are real while growth in make-believe tech like Apple products, investment products, and social media, ETC. Wow. Why are you so jaded? Make believe tech like the iPhone? I mean, what are you using? A flip phone? We're probably on an iPhone. What's with the drop on natural gas in the CPI report? I think that's just mostly because of oil's decline. I mean, look at Brent. You're down another 2.45% here. In the last month, you've come down from two months. You've come down from about $96 on the international blend, $20. So yeah, natural gas prices and, and just gas prices in general are falling. If we mean, you know, on a, on a trading level, natural gas, you're down about 3.4%. So it's a little bit more elevated than uh, than oil's decline, but we've seen that pretty commonly. If I zoom out, a lot of this, I think, is because you have a little bit more European focus here. But yeah, I mean... You're you're basically at pre-COVID levels for natural gas pricing. You're at historic lows on natural gas pricing. Not so yet on oil. Who remembers when oil went negative? Ah, that was entertaining. Look at that shipping storage guy. We pay lots of dividends. <laughs> oh, that guy was hilarious. Yes, Google Workspace is amazing. Seeing some of your comments here. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA down about 1%. How about Intel? Intel down about 38 bips. NASDAQ flat. Uh-oh. Uh oh we're getting a little more red over here. Red Tesla, red end phase. Uh-oh. Here it comes. Get your puts ready. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Who remembers that? And they have a very good roadmap for worldwide expansion, including China. They've gotten rid of the brands that are, have lagged. They have what people want. It's got a classic look to it. And it's what you should buy here, given the fact that they have Big up numbers year to year. So I'm glad that they did this, but it's a little late. That's, that's, that's all I got. That's all, that's I, got. all I got for you. I shake my head. I look at Carl. We so that's how it goes. Anyway, uh, I happen to like the purple label. Let's get the opening bell on the CNBC Real Time Exchange. And the big board, it's so largest. San Francisco based Reed celebrating 40 years at the NASDAQ. It's Bitcoin mining company Stronghold Digital Mining. Jim is willing to lead. hold 46.15, let's say. There it goes. It could do that. Uh, by the way, Hamid Magadam is the CEO Wee. of Prologis, and we should mention. Let's see what happens here. So, uh, NPA is opening slightly down, about a percent. NVIDIA doesn't know what direction it wants to go in, Intel wants to go down. Tesla is going down. Oh, there's the NASDAQ. It's going down. Opening trade. Oh, Apple rising. Wow. MSFT. I mean, if anybody's worried about Paul Volcker, this should convince them. No Paul Volcker. <laughs> F your puts, F your calls. I love those memes people do of J-Pal. Oh, Apple negative again. Oh, Ubiquity's run up a little bit. 
Let's come off some of that bottom it's had. 124. Yeah, look at that. Starting to pop off a little bit. Oracle still down 9.4%. End phase down a couple percent. Tesla's dropping more. More, I say. More of a discount. Push. Push the red candle. No. It's not what we want unless you want to buy. If you want to buy, there's a discount. The market don't like a CPI report. Oh, yeah. Bond yields just went positive. Almost up about a basis point. Does he want to use his tr tremendous balance sheet to turn the spigot on, or is it just he's happy with it? I mean, when you speak to Exxon, and when I spoke to Woods last week, Jim, frankly, he said nothing beyond, in many ways, a, more than they've said previously. They do believe that while Pioneer is certainly advanced technologically, they have the resources to take things even further in terms of the ability to get more and more out of the ground. Um, and more efficiently. Well, all I mean, in. I mean, you know more about this than I. Well, so. all, all in, you could argue that, that Sheffield, the CEO who built this great company, has got, say, about $30 a barrel, all in. Well, I mean, hey, even at 69, they can make a lot of money. Right. I mean, and Vicki Hobb yesterday with that Occidental deal, right. most of which was debt, $9 billion of the $12 billion headline number, uh, was also permanent assets, talking about how, you know, at seven. Okay, so keep in mind, tomorrow I'll be live for the producer price inflation report that is coming out at uh, 5.30 in the morning. So stay tuned for that. End phase really oh, lost the lead. Uh, looks like markets were hoping for a little bit of uh, some rate cut support there. Pricing that in a little too soon. Not coming yet. Uh, Apple slightly red, Q's red, NASDAQ, Tesla. Looks like probably going to get a little bit of a red day here. BTC still getting rejected by that 42 level. Palantir's up smidgen. Disney's negative. Yeah. So uh, anyway, PPI tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. Uh, mark your calendar for that. I'll be live uh, on this channel. Then uh, mark your calendar for 11 a.m. Uh, tomorrow uh, for the Fed. Then retail sales, we'll cover that live on Thursday at 5.30 a.m. And then PMIs Friday at uh, about uh, 6.45 a.m. So we can cover all of that. Uh, so subscribe. Make sure you're here on the live channel. Uh, we'll do the market open lives on this channel. Uh, and then, uh, then we'll see you there. As far as uh, course member live, we're going to do that in about 25 minutes. I got to get something done really quick. We'll get into the course live. Uh, and then go check out the courses on building your wealth. Take advantage of that uh, gold course before we see prices go up leading into Christmas. Uh, this Thursday, we're doing a little price increase. So it gives you a chance to, to get in before the price increase. Go to meetkevin.com to learn more or uh, jump on over to staff at meetkevin.com if you got questions. Thanks so much. And we'll see you next one.